you are stuck for conversation around the dinner table, you want to impress your pub quiz team with obscure details and offbeat opinions, Sorted, a curious Kiwi book of lists, is author Rosemary Hebersden's latest piece of work. It's full of fabulous facts, lists, rankings and statistics, which all centre around Aotearoa. Welcome, Rosemary. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure to have you here. This book is... Amazing. It goes without saying that you're a list person, I take it. Have you always been into lists? I do have kind of a librarian's mentality, it must be said. But the thing is about lists is that they're just irresistible because what better way can there be to contain a whole lot of information, to pin it down and to make it memorable and accessible forevermore? And lists are very on trend at the moment too. Like are they? Just about every single story you read online, it'll be a list. Yes. The top five of this thing, this sort of thing. They're mm -hmm. very, yeah, it's very, you're right, they're very memorable. Yes, and they also are a cause of great arguments around the table. <laughs> as well because the minute you produce a list of anything everybody always argues with it yes and says that they would have written it completely differently and why hadn't you know I got asked why didn't I include this or how could you say that and so it's it's um, quite con controversial mm. and it's a book you keep wanting to pick out because I'm not a huge reader but I like lists so yes. this is perfect for me very digestible yes and yes. and somebody there was a um, New York journalist who said the reason we like to process information in list form is because it's so much easier to sip on a green smoothie than to eat an entire bunch of kale. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? That is so absolutely 100% true. Uh, so you've written other books though about New Zealand, haven't, haven't you? Yes, you, I have. you always been fascinated about the Kiwi way of life? I have. I have been because I came here when I was 13. Um, I was born in Canada, had four years at school in Libya, in North Africa, wow. lived in the United States where I used to pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States every morning, lived in Australia and then came here with my New Zealand father and my Canadian mother. And right from an early age, I was conscious of the fact that New Zealanders did things in strange ways, strange <laughs> idiosyncratic ways, because of the fierce battles that used to take place between my parents over how to use a fork at the dinner table, oh, up that or way. how to yeah, pronounce that things. Yes, yes, yes. You, you, weren't allowed to cut your food up and then put your knife and fork down, swap your fork to this hand and eat like a cowboy, my father said. So, you know, there was like stacking the dishwasher really is for those sort of oh, silly yeah. arguments. Absolutely. This would have been a lot of work looking at the topics that you've covered. So whereabouts did you start to find all this information? I knew where I wanted to start and that was with the name Trevor. All right. Because Fred Dagg had six sons or approximately six sons, mm. all of them named Trevor. And they are all good boys, especially Trevor. So I thought I should start looking into New Zealanders who were called Trevor. And the whole deal was sealed for me when I discovered that Carmen, who was the very flamboyant drag queen in uh, old Wellington days in the sort of um, 60s and 70s and so on, she, that was Trevor Rupe, in fact. See, wow. Who became I Carmen. Oh, no, no, neither yeah. did I. Okay, so you got Trevor Mallard, that Trevor. Who else have you got? I can't think of any other Trevor. See, this well, would have been hard to put together. There is one Trevor you mustn't bring up, and that's the one who did the underarm bowling. Oh, oh yeah. yes. That's one that the Aussies can keep. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Was it Mikhail? Was it Mikhail? Keep. Oh, I love it. How oh, did you decide, work. when you're writing this book, how do you really figure out when you've done enough lists? Oh, yeah. Trevor Chapel. That was it too. Trevor Chapel, yeah. thank you. you yeah. um, the curious thing about this book is that I had nine categories of lists and I knew that I'd have to write some long ones, some medium length ones, and some short ones for the sake of the designers. So um, I sort of kept going into some things in depth and then other things just glossed over the surface. What was your favourite? Have you got any favourites? I know that's like asking I what your do, favourite child I do, is. I do. It's like having a million babies that I'm fond of. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, the one that I found actually really quite interesting was the one I forget the actual title of it. 15 concepts that need to be translated for a 21st century dictionary of Te Reo. Because the Māori Language Commission is responsible for coming up with new words to cover concepts that weren't around, you know, in the what, early so days. Mansplaining? Twerking. Twerking, the F-bomb. Yes. Resting bitch face. Oh, <laughs> I suffered terribly. Yeah. Side boob. Oh, yeah, well, Mike suffers from that too. Yes. <laughs> Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. yes. All these things you don't thing. think of. Yes, I yeah. just did a random flick through your book um, and I opened it at a page and it came up with 
Seven emotional catastrophes sent a Kiwi bloke to the psychiatrist's couch, <laughs> including, uh, you know, it's, but it's a serious list actually, depression, burnout, anxiety, other things as well, and then six excuses men give for refusing to go. Exactly. They're so stupid men about going to get good, sound psychiatric advice, and mm. they do come up with these standard excuses, and they think it's just not their problem. So I guess this book, for those that have already picked it up, has achieved what you wanted. I guess a conversation around a dinner table, some arguments, just some food for thought. Is that the whole purpose of the book? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, to satisfy my own intellectual curiosity. Okay, good. And well, to find worked. a way of containing... I mean, New Zealand is such a small country, but mm. it's so incredibly rich in wonderful stories. And we do such bizarre things in this country. And so this was a way of pinning them down and reminding myself of many of those stories, but without going into you know, great detail. It's just a reminder. It's almost like a reference book to lots of stories of social history in New Zealand as and much I as anything that. else. That so awesome. many good yeah. lists in fun. here. It's fun. <laughs> it really is. Thank you, Rosemary, for stopping by. Uh, Rosemary's book, Sorted, A Curious Kiwi Book of Lists, is available now from all good bookshops. It's one of those books you just keep picking up again because yeah. you just want to find out what the next list is. Six Kiwi women who have broken through the glass ceiling. Oh, there you go, Mel. Are you on the list?